All right, let's talk about some questions about movement disorders, movement disorders that I live, breathe, uh, eat, do all the time. Uh, I am a movement disorder neurologist, so uh, I will try to curtail my passion and enthusiasm and keep it relevant and practical for you guys. There will be a session on neurodegenerative disorder in our neurology rotation, uh, and uh, we will uh, uh, discuss the movement disorders in uh, some more details there, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'll be presenting and I would I would love to get your questions and, and talk to you about it. Uh, so let's uh, start with some questions um, uh, related to essential tremors. Can the essential tremors with no other sensory or motor symptoms be neurological? Um, and then a couple of questions on treatment of essential tremors. So um, essential tremor is a very specific disease that have a very clear, uh, no, uh, a clear presentation in terms of family history, a clear age of onset, a clear progression, uh, a clear response to medication, uh, known associated problems and neurological symptoms, and so on and so forth. It's a very, very, very specific kind of tremors. While tremors is a word that is very general. So if I rephrase this question, can the tremors with no other sensory or motor symptoms be neurological? The answer is still yes. Uh, the tremors can still be neurological if tremor is the only complaint. If there is no sensory problem, there's no motor problem, there's no weakness and nothing else. Uh, it still is very likely to be neurological. Now tremors can happen for some so-called non-neurological causes. Um, although it's debatable that you see, the mechanism of tremor is likely still uh, brain. Tremors always come from brain if there are true tremors. Now, there are some pseudo tremors, tre things that can look like tremors. So, for example, shivering. If you're feeling cold and shivering all the time, that may look like tremor. And sometimes we wrongly use the word tremors for them. The body was trembling or tremoring or having tremor. But it's not tremor, it's shivering. And shivering is a mus muscular phenomena. Now, you can consider that muscular phenomena are still neurological, but some muscular phenomena are rheumatological, so it may be a rheumatological disorder or something like that. Um, let me think of some other shaking uh, that may be non-neurological etiology. Hmm. Very hard to think because in the end, the movement produced, which is, you know, let's say shaking of the hand, is involving the brain even though the etiology or the cause of that tremor may be non-neurological. So for example, um, hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism both can cause tremor, anxiety can cause tremor, medications can cause tremor. So there are many, you know, hypoglycemia can cause tremor. There are many, many non-neurological systemic uh, etiologies for tremors and other movement disorders, but the actual pathophysiology is still in the brain. There has to be brain involvement uh, for this to be present as movement disorder. Now, essential tremor is a disorder that is often familial, meaning that there is a strong family history of other family members having a tremor. The onset is in early teenage years, was the main peak of onset. And then there is a second peak of onset in late 40s or early 50s. Uh, but I would say don't think about that much. In a young person, teenage, school going, college, an onset of a tremor that is only bothersome because it's a new thing that happens to them or get noticed during a round exam uh, where they were nervous and they start the tremor, they come to you or they're trying to get married or something like that. And those tremors, uh, if you, they just wanted to be diagnosed and cured if possible, but if you tell them that it cannot be cured, you, they have to live with it, then they actually don't want any treatment for it. They, they can often control it until it gets worse 20 years later or so. It slowly progresses over time, gets worse gradually, usually require treatment in their 40s and 50s, even though the onset was in 20s or early 30s. So 20 years of a gap requiring treatment and they respond beautifully for two medication. They respond very, very strongly to alcohol consumption. Uh, so always ask that, you know, you will be surprised even in Pakistan and medications, benzo medications, anxiety medication, propranolol, primidone, topamax are usually the classic drugs for it, but they can gradually get worse. So you may need to increase the medication every two to three years and they may come to a point where the tremors are 
not fully responsive to medication and may require other therapies such as surgical therapies of the brain, a tremor surgery of the brain, uh, and they have some associated other problems. So hearing loss, for example, is very common. One third of people with uh, essential tremors have hearing loss um, and so on and so forth. Ataxia is another common one, unsteadiness. But the point is that essential tremors are very defined the scope of disorder. Not every tremor is essential tremor. There are more than uh, there, are, there are more than 100 causes that I can list for tremor. Actually, if you just look at the medications that can cause tremor, there's probably 100 different medications that can cause tremor. And there are probably 50 systemic disease, renal failure, hyperuremia, uh, liver failure, you know, kidney failure, hyperaminemia, hypoaminemia, hyperglycemia, hyponatremia, hyponatremia, all of them can cause tremor. So there are a long list of causes of tremors. And even in neurological disorders, there's a long list of tremors. There's essential tremor, there's dystonic tremor, there is myoclonic tremor, there is Parkinson's tremor, there's rubral tremor, uh, and so on and so forth. There is a long, there's orthostatic tremor. So tremor is of so many different varieties. Uh, and the there is a whole approach to tremor that I will see if I can fit in to my talk, although my talk is on neurodegen neurodegenerative disorders. So lastly, let me finish on treatment of essential tremor. There are three drugs that are the first line treatment of essential tremor. Um, the first one is primidone, which is mycelin. Uh, it is not uh, available in Pakistan directly, but is often available through coming in from India or Dubai or somewhere else. So there are some pharm pharmaceutical stores which used to be able to get it for you. Uh, the second option is propranolol, which is easily available, often works really well, is also good because anxiety can worsen your tremor and propranolol will also block anxiety-related worsening of tremor. The main thing is to watch for slow heart rate and depression. 30, 30 to 40% risk of developing depression on propranolol. So don't forget that. And impotence is a big complaint that young males will have uh, related to propranolol uh, seen in one third of patients with propranolol. And then the third one uh, that I would prefer that uh, neurologists should use and not primary care will be the Topamax. Mycelin, primidone, and propranolol can be used by primary care physician very easily, no problem. Even Topamax, but Topamax some additional issues. Topamax can cause metabolic acidosis, with, especially with contrast studies, can cause kidney stones, um, things like that. They're, they're strain, they can cause cognitive impairment. There are unusual things about Topamax that it's better not to get, get into that drug. It may be a little dirty for you. Uh, propranolol and primidone are straightforward options and then these are the first line and there's a second line there's a third line that you can use and then as i mentioned there's a brain surgery for for tremor there's a few brain surgeries if you want to know there's focus ultrasound related surgery for tremor there's gamma knife surgery for tremor there's a thalamotomy and then which is lesional surgery and then there's deep brain stimulation surgery so four or five different surgeries for essential tremor all right let's look at next question where can we localize essential tremor? So tremor is an alternating contraction of agonist and antagonist, uh, meaning that two muscles that are opposing muscles are, or group of muscles are contracting. So muscles that extend the hand contract and then relax and the muscles that flex the hand contract and, and while the others are relaxing. So there is an alternate contraction which creates kind of a swinging movement. They call it two or fro movement around a null point. So this is the nat natural central null point and it's a movement and it's equal distance around the two points is an essential tremor. Now, one is contracting, other is contracting, one is contracting. Why is this happening? We believe that's because of a loop of signal going around in the brain. So the loop keeps circulating. So this contracts and then the loop passes away, it relaxes, and the loop goes through the other group of muscles, then that contract, and that loop is just keep on rotating, and the tremor continues at a frequency. Tremor frequencies goes as low as one per hertz, it's the slowest tremor. Those are tremors like rubral tremor, um, uh, or also called Holmes tremor, and goes all the way as fast as 18, 20 hertz. 18 or 20 hertz means that 18 vibrations in one second, I cannot even produce it. Uh, and that's the orthostatic tremor, the fastest known uh, or fastest possible is a physiological tremor. And there are many tremors in between. Some are three hertz, some are five hertz, some are seven, eight, nine, and so on. And all that depends on how large the loop is, that a loop is very big or fast. Then there is oh, there is at least a minimum time needed for the signal to go through the loop, and that's why the tremor is that much. And uh, as I said, the fastest is the orthostatic tremor. That's probably the shortest loop where the current is moving very fast and creating multiple vibration during a second. Now, the essential tremor, we think about the loop, uh, the, the loop as 
cerebro thalamic loop so the information goes from let's say cortex to thalamus thalamus to cerebellum cerebellum back out to red nucleus of brain stem and there to thalamus and thalamus to cortex so cortico thalamo cerebellar cerebellar loop so cortex to thalamus to cerebellar loop is the loop considered as a cause of essential tremor why that loop starts creating this vicious cycle of a current that is rotating uh, we think it's probably related to some cerebellar degeneration these studies looking at essential tremor in the cerebellum shows a loss of perconjecial um too much details you know what are perconjecial and things like that but there are some pathological change or loss of brain cells uh that leads to the formation of this loop of uh, current that starts early on and as you lose more and more cells every year or two then you continue to have progression of the tremor severity or amplitude of tremor is more and more loops are recruited or cells are recruited for the loop very good